。我操，牛逼牛逼！怎么能找到这么牛逼的舒服？真是太屌了，我第一次见到。牛逼！香港佬评价一下，这辈子第一次见这么好看的东西。<笑> Guys, this is the second time I've been this castellan from area for this whole year, and I find out I really get along good with local people here. 走嘛，不要骑那个自行车了，那个烂黑自行车，丢车掉，上我车啊！不要走哎！回来带你去好玩的地方啊 ！The last time I come here is me with Mr. A. And we found two new species of Asopoda. One is the green species, the green Tragladillo or Tragladillo. How to say that? I forgot it. And、uh, another one is the China version of rubber duck. Yeah, it's very similar than the Thailand species, but I have no idea why I can find it here in China. 是广西这边气候其实跟泰国很相似，我觉得在这边还是可以找到更多类似鸭仔一样的物种。And something more surprised me is just a few hours ago, Mr. R find a new species of rubber duck. It's absolutely the different species from the first one we found a few months ago, and、uh, it's just around 50 kilometers from the old location, but they are definitely different. This is what we found two months ago. What's different? Color, shape, big. Oh, I forgot to introduce you this Hong Kong guy. This time he's going with us, the real hobbyist. He's going so far to see the environment of the Asopoda. Respect. <笑>像猴一样<笑>，非常专业。你知道我现在拍你们两个像什么吗？<笑>像那种东南亚的 AK 传媒啊<笑>。<笑>那你要拿本 AK 才行呀、啊。嗯，就差你们抓出来，然后一口一个真香了。<笑>五次，五次盲珠。对，这只盲珠也是比较特色。对，五次，就看着像骷髅啊，而且很很柴。柴是什么意思？怎么说呢？柴是什么？不好解释，形容词，<笑>有点不好解释。<笑>是广东话吗？有点柴，还没意思呀。你记住，形容口感的吗？<笑>是啊，不是说这个鸡有点柴，有点老。嗯，哈哈哈，找到一种岩地，颜色有点奇怪，你过来看。Asopoda is very different in form from the one we found two months ago, and the size is almost twice of lichen. Mr. R gave it a name called Concavus. This one, you think how? Honestly, it's still the best effect of the show. I'm the first one to see such a beautiful thing. Too crazy. So. 我们今天在这里找到了一种比较普通的野。Because of this area have so much mosquitoes, and also the species we found are not really attractive for me, just for me personally. So we decide to move and、uh, see if we can find some other species. 
，这里有一片土著人生活的痕迹，钻出了一只野生的阿老。<笑>这搭的啥呀？这不是你搭的吗？啊，是我搭的。<笑><笑>你到家了。是我搭的床。好，晚安，我们去野采了。你在这里睡吧。呸！来，来，跑跑跑跑跑跑！这么多蝴蝶来补充矿物质。In search of more caves, we climb up the cliff, but only small caves were found. The karst development here is incomplete, or maybe we didn't find the entries of a large cave. To be honest, it's quite boring. Ah, 没事，一堆先祖陪你。I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna. Yeah, 累死了。已经在这个大山里面漫无目的的走了三个小时了。返回了。感觉这边环境也就这样了。怎么说香港佬？走了。撤吗？ Just on our way back, my Hong Kong guy found some interesting little creatures. 他虫子在哪里？很小一只。转进去，它等于说是让整个植物那里增生了哈。对，就好像，然后病变就对，然后就吃，它们病变它们糖分就很高，可以吃。那、啊、是什么木的昆虫啊？很多种的，这个主要虫因为它分布很很广的，各种各样的玩意都会玩这个玩这个花招，因为这个花招很好用啊，你就不用管了，你把你把孩子生在里面了，然后它自己就控制植物，让营养全部聚集嘛，然后它儿子就可以吃了。有一些是直接四代都在一个虫里面的，有些，来看它这个洞看到没有？哦、oh. ，他们就把它专门搞个洞，然后他们就吃，就长长它的营养全部聚集在这里，然后这个坨坨他们就吃，就像是人长肿瘤一样。对，它病变。他们这种，他们这种，他们可以控制这个植物长成什么样的虫蝇的，就不同不同种类的，他们长出不同不一样的形态。很神奇，看看就说吧，是虫蝇来的。他会专门把这个地方增生，然后黑色的那个是吧？对，黑色其实黑色那点东西，它就会吃。嗯，对，就吃在里面的东西。有一些小型的品种，他们是。四代都在一起的，就搞成一个很大的虫蝇，这就是、四四代都在一起。寄生兽，对，有些虫蝇贼好，很好看的，像果实一样的。它能控制植物，让它长成什么样子都能控制，就很奇怪。就是千百年来的那个进化，啊、太有意思了。有很多虫蝇可以吃的呀，可以吃。有很多虫蝇都可以吃，很多虫蝇是要来的。就人吃啊？对啊，很多直接能直接啃吗？很可以啊。上一次我朋友跟我说那个洛心腹能吃，洛心腹是有一些广西的，广西有些地方是吃的。然后我真的抓了一堆，我回去把它油炸了，结果特别难吃，肯定难吃啊。<笑>不是有一股那个虫子味，就是特别刺激的味道。一种虫子如果连是，如果连广州都不敢吃，多了肯定不好吃。<笑>广州，评判标准广州，结论福建人能吃。对。你只在这里抓鼠妇，没人没人喜欢看的。粉丝说只有变态才养虫的，我不知道拍什么好了。阿老整点活啊，养不打火机看看。拍那个 AK 传媒啊，那种。这边有些什么？那种人家。In today's society, all kinds of information are fragment. It really has a huge impact on our lives. I was thinking about this when I was shooting this video. Like, what kind of videos do viewers like to watch? 
I'm a YouTuber who explores creatures in the wild. Most of the time, I go into the dark woods at night. When I used to take videos about cold water fish, the scenery was very beautiful. But recently, I have been exploring the wildness with Mr. R and my Hong Kong guy. These two people, they just like uh, they squared on the ground and just looks like looking for food. <laughs> Maybe people would like it if we did a wild picnic show that they eat a lot of weird creatures. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, everyone was born with very strong curiosity about nature, about everything around you. But uh, when you get older and older, it's gonna be like an old cat. Just few things can attract you. But I really want to bring you in my perspective and uh, explore this live covered world together. My Hong Kong guy found a lot of interesting stuff just in a few minutes. Mr. Ah, it seems like Mr. Ah found something more special. Let's check it. This asopoda have bright orange color. They live under the fallen leaves, sometimes in the earth. If you dig the earth, you will find out under it is limestone. Limestone has many gaps, so it's very breathable. And do you remember what is on the limestone? It's a layer of soil and fallen leaves. So it's basically like a moist rising layer. If you are keeping asopoda at home market, it's very useful. The main food for this species is fallen leaves and maybe also some fungus. So they are kind of otaku. They usually won't come out unless it's rain very heavily. That means it's a big chance we're gonna miss it. But today I have two professional asopoda explorers with me. I don't really worry about that happened. If we missed something which 100% we couldn't find all of the species, I will definitely come back in the future. This is what we found in two years ago. Color, 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 color. The one named Popofolia is a species we found two months ago, and it's just 50 kilometers from here. Each Popofolia looks different, and some of the Popofolia looks really similar than the species we found today. From the video, maybe you will feel like they are the same species, but if you got them on your hand, they are really different from the color and the skin. When you touch it, kumquats have very strong plastic feeling. By the way, due to the reason of bright orange color, we give it the name kumquat. And there is another reason. The area we found this species have many orange farms. But most of the orange are green color and people eat it with salt. So we're not going to call it orange, you know, we call it kumquat. In my previous video, some of my fans asked me, Hey Jason, you always go to the wildness, how to protect yourself from vipers? Okay, here we go. This is the most venom species I can find in this area, but not the most dangerous one. The most dangerous one should be King Cobra during its breeding period. Back to the question, before you protect yourself, the most important thing is you have to see the snake first. I've been exploring this area for many many years. When I say this area, it means southwest China. I already know what kind of snakes I will match and which specific place they will show up. Some will hunting on the bushes, some will walking near a stream, some like hiding in a cave. Because 
or this one looking for food in the rice field. If you know this species so much, in normal situation you don't really have to worry about them. If you had many adventures and you saw them many many times, each time you saw a viper is a kind of learning. You will learn what kind of environment they like to live. They like to track or sit back and wait for prey. It's same for all creatures. You keep learning from them, and sometimes you can find some new species never published. Did you see the black heart pattern on its body? It's actually quite normal for this species. The black and white pattern are not stable. You cannot find two snakes have exactly the same patterns. The genetics is very mysterious. Many breeders use the different colors and patterns to corn breed snake. pet snakes. Sometimes it could be very beautiful. Corn, corn, corn snake. Yeah, corn snake. Ah, 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 snake. As I'm just driving, and a cobra, a little cobra, just crossing the road and going to the sheriff's. <laughs> this dog. <laughs> This is the number three day we come here, and uh, we find another species of the how to say the name, the T genus, Tergladillo, or Tergladillo. This Tergladillo is very unique. It has a layer of waxy. I want to take some clear shorts after back to hotel, but it completely changed the outfit. The wax was rubbed off during the bumpy road. Now it has a brown color with some yellow star dot. It reminds me of a species we found in Guangdong. Unlike most of the Tergladillos, the protective color does not come from the skin color but from the layer of waxy mixed with the skin color. The light shines through the wax onto the original color and the layer of wax just like a filter, changing the color of light. It's very interesting. It suddenly reminds me another species I found two years ago, the egg yolk. It also has a thin layer of waxy, but it's more than 200 kilometers from here. Two species of Tergladillo use the same method to camouflage themselves. As what I know, a river can divide them into two species, so maybe more species of Asopoda can use this trick. Now we have two species of Tergladillo in the same picture, and the brown color one is waxy and uh, the green color one is concavate. You can tell they are pretty similar, but the green color one never have that thick layer of waxy, even in the breeding room. Let's see the whole environment. We can see at first we have limestone, many limestones here, and uh, the limestone is usually wet on the surface because of there are many moss on it. They are green and alive. And also some of this stuff, it can prove at least the limestone is usually wet. Bamboo is another reason can show you it's not very dry here because bamboo needs many water to grow. And uh, actually this is a lot of eucalyptus planting here, it's a hillside. And this is a little corner behind the hillside. Back to the room, we can take some really close shots of a peculiar insect. My Hong Kong guy found it under a eucalyptus tree. This is an assassin bug. But unlike the normal assassin bugs, this one carries some dead antibody on its back. 
Every time it catches an ant, it will suck it to dry and then put them on the back. You can see it's not only ant's body on its back. It's also some animal's poop and a cover of soil or sand. This is the highest level of disguise. Guys, this is the number four day I come here, and uh, let me make a simple introduce of this little area. As what you can see between the road and the village, there are very large fields. They grow rice here, the most common food in Asia. And behind the village is thousands of limestone mountains. You guys may feeling like this area is a little bit like Halong in Vietnam or Guilin in Guangxi, but it's quite different because this area is actually an agriculture city. The fruits here are very famous: the orange and bananas, and also some lemon. A lot of big companies stay here, and uh, they rent a lot of land to planting the fruit trees. The big company have technology, so they could make the fruit quality really good and also dirt cheap at the same time. So I, I don't know any of them were export. I didn't get into the story too much, but as well I know, the fruit here actually tastes really good. Do you know what is it? They open the light for a whole night. It's just uh, near the street. Can you guess what it is? It's actually dragon fruit. Look at the dragon fruit. <laughs> People live here are really good at planting things. There are some eucalyptus trees. This, this, all eucalyptus trees. But it's definitely illegal here. Let me show you. Because if you want planting this tree in China, you have to get the proof, the proof by government. But this tree, they definitely not approve. But people just don't give a shit about that. They just plant in here. Mr. Ah and my Hong Kong guy. <laughs> Finally, I saw you. Because I didn't wear so much clothes, so I didn't go with them. But I making a video here to introduce you guys the environment. 找到了吗? <laughs> But it's turning to nothing found here. Let's have a look of the little mount. If you guys want looking for Asopoda on this mountain, how you get start? As we all know, it's a limestone mount, and uh, we can see what types of trees on this mountain. This. Uh, eucalyptus tree, this uh, human planting, and uh, this grove are also eucalyptus tree. Why people planting eucalyptus trees in this grove and also that area? Because oh, also that area. I'm sorry. This is this area and uh, that area, the two area of eucalyptus tree. Because the lands here were a kind of flight, so people can planting the tree and also the earth, the soil is more than other land. So how are we looking for the asopoda? For me, I will go to check this point first. The look behind the eucalyptus tree and uh, many original plants over there. I think there should be some wet area, but the most chance I can find as a polar, I think it's this area, because as what I say before, the eucalyptus tree have more soil and uh, flat land under there, and also this is a limestone wall, so 
It's easy to get here. If you're lucky, you will find a little street. But if you are not lucky, you just uh, bring a knife or something to make your own way to here. And you can check the limestone. If the limestone are wet or some underground water just uh, running out from the limestone, you get very lucky. Then a big chance you can find, I suppose, here. But it's just what I say. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. For me, I will check. Today we are not that lucky. After sunset, we still got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> A little moss just uh, running across the road. Night is falling down and uh, we still have nothing found today. This is another point. We stay here. You found it? No. There's a mask. There's a mask? What kind of mask? Okay. Hong Kong guy found one turgladillo. The green asshole pulled up, but only one. So, we're moving to another point now. Morning. The local people keep warning us do not go into the mount after sunset. Mm, in Asia, people live in different area, they believe in different things, but it's always about ghost. To be honest, I don't really give a shit about that, so we just keep moving. The reason why we always go into the mount at night because the species we are looking for, they are more active at night and you can see this is the species we found before we call it kumquat it's a very beautiful species guys we find a big tree i think there should be something uh, usually you find a big tree, many creatures will hiding in the tree. Yeah. Guys, after one day's driving, we finally got lucky. <laughs> the end of this day. Another troglodyte. Well, we don't know if it's the same species or not. <laughs> Just uh, a little village. And the building is so close to the mount. So they climb on the wall, on the human built wall. This is one. Got it. And uh, there is another one. <laughs> you check check these the different species. Can you see if it's different? Is it different? Which one? The 昨天那种是吧? Okay, so it's the same species of what we found yesterday. <laughs> it's just a building maybe for animals, for pigs or something. And uh, another building for woods, a lot of woods here. The wall is not actually wet, it's a little bit dry, but still can find some. Oh, Hong Kong guy find another one. Uh, you got it? There are some other human made wall. You got it? Seems like they find many troglodyte here. This is the number four night of this travel. 
Every day I have to drive the car, climb the mount and looking for animals and also making this beautiful video which you are watching now. Uh, actually I'm a little bit tired so let's just back to the hotel and uh, check what we got in this whole travel. <laughs> Guys, this is the last day I stay here and uh, me and Mr. Ah, we're gonna take some pictures of the species we found and also me gonna take some videos. I can't wait to see what we got this time. First is the bright orange color one. It's probably the most beautiful one I found in this whole year. But who knows, I'm going to Malaysia this month. Maybe I can find something new. And then we got the waxy one, but the wax was removed during the transport. In the wild, the colors are so different. But never mind, the beautiful light blue and green color just back after molting. This is Concavas. They have some beautiful jelly green dots, but now the hotel table just make everything looks yellow. That's my fault. Now we put the waxy and Concavas together. The one have more green color is Concavas, and the brown one is waxy. They are pretty similar, but Concavas never have that thick layer of waxy. Then we got a common species but uncommon outfit. It has some genetic mutation. Normally these species don't have that red color. They will just have some normal color just like a normal isopod. But this one may have something like albino. That's the reason why it looks so red. <laughs> Guys, I'm so fucking tired. This is the last night I stay here and uh, I'm going back to home soon. Maybe I'm gonna sleep for 10 hours. I am the only driver in my team and uh, the day before last night, I drive more than 300 kilometers all around the cast land from and uh, the Google map just lead me into a very remote countryside. <laughs> the street just going to more and more tiny, then just uh, disappear. The end of the street is nothing. It's so small way, so I cannot turn it around. So the last okay. mission for me is drive these two guys to another limestone mount and leave them alone there so they could explore by themselves and I can back home, take a bath, have a good sleep. So see you guys next time. By the way, let's go massage. <laughs>